onto your hats and gallop along with Guy Madison as Wild Bill Hickok and his pal Jingles, which is me, Andy Devine. We got another rootin' tootin' Wild Bill Hickok adventure story for you from that famous talking cereal, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Snap, <laughs> crackle, <laughs> pop. Today, Kellogg's Rice Krispies, the world's only talking cereal, brings you Wild Bill Hickok. Transcribed in Hollywood and starring Guy Madison as Wild Bill and Andy Devine as his pal Jingles. In just 30 seconds, you'll hear the exciting story of The Battle of Buzzard Lake. If you heard the jingle of spurs at your front door, you'd know a cowboy had come calling. And at breakfast, when you hear that happy sound snap, crackle, pop, you know you're set to enjoy Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Yes, sir, when you pour the milk on Rice Krispies, they sound off with snap, crackle, pop, because they're tumble-toasted. That spins them full of crispy goodness and makes them golden toasty all over. Real good tasting. Have Rice Krispies first thing tomorrow. You'll like them. United States Marshal Wild Bill Hickok and his big deputy Jingles rode the deserts, the prairies, and the mountains, upholding the law in the West. But one of their strangest adventures came to them when they took part in the Battle of Buzzard Lake. Well, 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 I reckon that there's your telegraph message coming in now, Bill. I guess so. Let me know what it says as soon as you can, will you, Spark? Sure, sure. Must be important. Yeah, it's important. At least it is to Wild Bill. For me, I wish they'd never invented that dad burn telegraph thing. Oh, I don't know, Jingles. It's a pretty handy thing. Well, it's handy for people who want to get a hold of us and send us chasing all over the West. Wasn't for the telegram, it might take them a week or two to catch up with us, and meantime, we could go fishing. We haven't been on a real tough case for weeks, Jingles. Maybe this will do it. Well, you don't need to be so happy about it. You sound like it'd be fun to get out on the trail and get ourselves shot at some more. Here it is, Wild Bill. Yeah, don't seem to me to say very much. Hmm, let me see. What's it say, huh, Bill? What's it say? It says, believe Quincy hiding in Black Mountains near Buzzard Lake. Please investigate at once. Is that all? That's all, Jingles. Well, at least it said please. That's more than the old bobcat ever said before. That's no way to talk about your superior officer, partner. The boss says please investigate, so let's hit the trail for Buzzard Lake. Yes, sir. <laughs> Bill, is that Buzzard Lake down there in the valley? Sure is, Jingles. Mighty pretty, isn't it? Yeah, Bill, that looks... Uh, <laughs> sure looks like that lake might have some fish in it, don't some it? Some real big fish, I hope. What do you say we take just a little time off to go fishing? Huh? Can we? Huh, Bill? That's just what we're doing, partner. Oh, we are not. We're working. We're riding down there to see if we can find some kind of an owl hoot who will probably try to shoot our ears off. That owl hoot is our big fish, Jingles. He's Bart Quincy, the most wanted mill robber in the whole West. Quincy? Oh, I've heard of him, Bill. He's just plain no good. You're right there. He holds up post offices and mail trains. He's the one. And he shoots the clerks if he don't like their looks. Yep. And he killed a couple of sheriffs. Sure did. And he's the one we're going fishing for. That's right, Jim. You know something? I'd rather fish for catfish. Not this trip. Or bass. No. We're after Quincy, and we may find him here at Buzzard Lake. That's what I was afraid of. Bill, you got any idea where he might be hiding now? No, but we'll stop at the trading post and see if anybody's seen him. That's a good idea. Maybe I can get a little snack of some kind to keep me going to lunchtime. Whoa, ho! Whoa, Buckshot, whoa, boy. This trading post is just about as big as a log cabin, Bill. Well, that's all they have in this part of the country, Jingle. Well, would you look at that? Look at what? That big cheese and that great big barrel of crackers. Bill, I'm going to like it here. Just hold on to your appetite for a minute, partner. Here comes the trader. <laughs> Howdy, strangers. Howdy. You be strangers here about, ain't ya? Yeah, we be strangers, ain't we? Well, nobody's a stranger <laughs> long around here. <laughs> Size, my name. Size Huskins. Proprietor, Buzzard Lake, a trading post. Well, howdy, now this here... Oh, also is... handle the express office, and I'm the postmaster, too. 
and the justice of the peace. When there's any justice to be done, <laughs> which ain't often. Well, that's nice. Now this I do a little the... prospecting now and then, and I got a patch of barley and spuds, and I run a trap line. Well, you're real busy. Now this I is... I started what... a newspaper back spare, but there ain't enough folks around here to keep it going. Now I just look after the trading post and the farm and the express office and the trap line. And, and now I, this is... I the... still play the fiddle, though, and no. call square dances. Now and... just a doggone minute. Yeah, what, what's the matter? I just want to say that this here is Wild Bill Hickok. Wild? Oh, Hickok? Well, how do you do? I'm glad to know you, Wild Bill. Well, I thought you would be, and I'm Jingles. And I'm glad to know you, Jangles. Jingles, Dad Burnett. Oh, you guys. Are you fellas here on business or pleasure? Business this time, sir. Si. Thought you might be able to help us. Is that so? I'll be glad to help if I can, Marshal. Have you seen any strangers around Buzzard Lake lately? Well, now, there's lots of trappers and prospectors stopping here. Eh, you might call them strangers. Eh? Well, now, the gent we're looking for ain't no trapper or prospector. Here's a picture of him right here on this wanted poster. You ever see that face before? Eh, yeah, now, let me see. Uh, fix my glasses, yeah. Oh, yes. He's been in here once or twice. He loaded up on grub and supplies. How was he traveling? Well, he and a big black-haired guy, they had a canoe. They came across the lake, and then they went back the same way. Guess that's our man, Bill. Yeah, what's he wanted for, Marshal? Mail robbery and murder. Oh, well, I swear. Just keep your eyes and ears open, and if you hear anything about Bart Quincy, let us know. Bart Quincy? Oh, well, I won't forget his name. <laughs> Get down. He's outside the window. Come on, Jingles. There he goes, Bill, through the trees. Hold it, Jingles. Hold it. Let him go. But, Bill... That isn't Quincy. But whoever he is, he's liable to lead us right to our man. Charlie, here's a heartwarming sound. It'll take you right out to a ranch corral. Listen. Oh, yeah. Sounds like somebody's shoeing a horse. Sure thing. Out west, you hear that sound the year round. Speaking of heartwarming sound, Slim, don't you hear that cheery snap, crackle, pop of Kellogg's Rice Krispies? Don't you hear that sound the year round out west? Deed you do, Charlie. That snap, crackle, pop puts me right back at a ranch house table. That sound makes me taste that wonderful Rice Krispies flavor. Doggone, makes me hungry. Oh, there's nothing quite like those tumble-toasted Rice Krispies. They're the only talking cereal in the world. And that special tumble-toasting process of Kellogg's spins them full of crispy goodness and makes them golden toasty all over. Real eating, those snap, crackle, pop Rice Krispies are real eating. Listen, partner, I mean you there are listening to this show. Why don't you ask Mom to get you a big box of Kellogg's Rice Krispies today? And then tomorrow morning, have yourself the breakfast that sounds off to tell you how good it tastes. Delicious Rice Krispies. When Wild Bill mentioned the name of Bart Quincy to the trader at Buzzard Lake, shots came crashing through the window of the trading post. When Bill and Jingles hurried outside after the would-be assassin, Bill decided to let him go and follow him. There he goes, Bill. He's getting away in a canoe. Hold it right here, Jingles. But Bill, he tried to kill us. Let me have a shot at him. No. We can be pretty sure that he's working for Quincy. If we follow him, maybe he'll lead us right to the man we're after. Hey, he's Quincy's man, all right. Yeah. Yes, he's the big guy that I was telling you about. Yeah. You have a canoe we can borrow, Si? Why, sir, just help yourself from any of those down at the boat landing there. What? Me? In a canoe? Why, sure, why not? You, uh, oh, I see. Oh, well, we'll just squeeze you in easy, Jingles. <laughs> you ought to fit just real nice and snug. Come on, let's get after that bushwhacker. I don't think I ever been in a canoe, Bill. How do you make them go? We'll show you, partner. You just pick up a paddle and you start swinging it. Hey, Bill, that canoe out there is headed for that island. It sure is. Side, does anybody live on that island? No, not anymore. There was an old trapper built a cabin out there, but, oh, he hasn't been around for years now. Maybe the man we're looking for is holed up in that old cabin. Yeah, see, you know that could be. That sure could be. Why, it'd make a fine hiding place, all right. Well, here's our canoe, Jingles. I'm in. Me? Get into that little thing? That's right. Do I ride in it or wear it? 
Just step into it and sit down. <laughs> and step into the middle of it or we'll be fishing you out of the lake. <laughs> Bill Hickok, you can think of more ways to get me killed or drowned or busted up than anybody I know. You won't get hurt, Jingles. Climb in. No, all right. Now hold this peanut shell still for me. Okay. I got it. Ooh, <laughs> it wiggles. <laughs> sit down, you're rocking the boat. Oh, that's better. <clears throat> All right, here I come. All right, shove us off, Si. All right, Bill. There you go. Thanks. All right, start paddling, Jingles. All right, but I ain't no canoe wrangler. I wish these owl hoots would stick to dry land where I can chase them on Joker. Hey, Bart. Get the supplies all right? Yeah, they're down in the canoe, but we might not get a chance to use them. What do you mean? I mean we got trouble on our trail, big trouble. Looks like we're going to have to pull out of here. What are you talking about? We got all the money from that last robbery, we got plenty of supplies, and we got a great hiding place. Why should we pull out? That's what I'm trying to tell you. Well, Bill, Hickok's on your trail. Hickok? Yes, Hickok. Now, how do you feel? I still ain't worried. But, Bart, he and that big deputy of his are coming across the lake in a canoe right now. I don't care. We'll stop him, all right. But, Bart, look out there. You can see him now. Sure, I can see him. That's why I picked this island. Well, what are you going to do? I'll show you. Hand me that rifle. Well, here. You going to plug him? I'm going to try. Uh, they're just out of range. Yeah, but... But they're stopping. <laughs> Is he spade? That's a nice thing about an island. Nobody can get close to you without you seeing them. And if Marshal Hickok and that big deputy want to come any closer, they stand a good chance of stopping plenty of my lead. Bill, there's another shot. If we go any closer to that island, we're going to be setting ducks for that buzzard with the rifle. I know it, Jingles, and we're too far out to shoot back with a six-gun. Well, I guess we might as well paddle back to the trading post then, huh? Not just yet. Oh. Let's paddle around the island and see if there's some way to sneak up on them. Clear around the island, Bill, my arms are about ready to drop off now. I'm not used to herding a canoe. Can't help it, partner. Big in. Let's go. And I'm beginning to find out how to make this thing go where I want it to, Bill. But I'd still rather have a horse. A horse wouldn't do much good out here on the lake. I didn't say I wanted to be on the lake. See, those polecats are still shooting at us. We can't sneak up on them, Bill. There's nothing to hide behind. Wait a minute, Jingles. What, what is it? I just noticed something. Well, so did I. I just noticed that no matter how we try to catch up with those coyotes, we're liable to get our ears shot off. No, we're not. Over at that end of the island, there's a steep cliff. I see it. If we paddle in under there, they'll have to climb up on top to get a shot at us. Sure, but that's just what they'll do. But if we move fast, maybe we can land on the beach before they can get us. Maybe, he says. Bill Haycock, when it comes to my chances of staying alive, I don't want no maybe about it. It's the only chance we've got, Jingles. Now, come on, let's move in. Hey, we got this thing moving pretty fast. I'm getting pretty good with the paddle. We're making those two gents run along the beach to keep up with us. I think we're going to make it, Jingle. But aren't we getting in rival range now? Yeah, but if they stop to shoot, we'll just get that much closer. Or else we'll get ourselves ventilated with a rifle slug. That's a chance we've got to take. <coughs> hey, now that was close. Yeah, we're in range, all right. Yeah, that Jasper out there is a pretty good shot. Too darn good to suit me. They stop to shoot, though. That means we've got a chance to beat them to the beach under the cliff. I'm not sure I want to. <coughs> Bill, I think we're close enough, so can I hit him with a six-gun? Better not try it yet. Oh, just one shot, Bill. Maybe it'll make him stop shooting at us. Jingle. Don't stand up. Jingle! I just... <laughs> Jingle, you all right, partner? I guess so. That darn canoe pitched me off like a sunfish in bronze. Grab hold of the canoe. We'll have to swim for the beach. You mean we're still going to try to land on that island? Sure are. That's what we came out here for. <laughs> Hey, Bill, we're just sitting ducks on those weasels on shore. Then start swimming. It's our only chance. Well, this may be our only chance, but if you ask me, it's one of the slimmest chances we ever had. <laughs> Hear 
that, Charlie? They call that the booming call of the prairie chicken. No other animal noise like it. You mean an exclusive sound like the snap, crackle, pop Rice Krispies make when you pour the milk on them. No other cereal sounds off like Kellogg's Rice Krispies, kids. It's the world's only talking cereal. And there's a good reason for it. Rice Krispies speak up because they're so fresh and crisp. And they're so fresh and crisp because they're tumble toasted. Over and over the rice kernels go till they're spun through with crispy goodness and golden toasty all over. Rice Krispies is the only tumble toasted cereal. Wranglers, you can hear some mighty musical sounds out on the prairie, but my favorite sound comes right out of a cereal bowl. A big bowl of Rice Krispies swimming in good cold milk. That snap, crackle, pop is a song of joy to these cowpokes ears. It's a song of joy to more and more kids every day. Tell Mom you'd like to be called to breakfast with a snap, crackle, pop tomorrow. Ask her to get a box of Kellogg's Rice Krispies today. When Jingles stood up in the canoe to take a shot at the bandits on shore, both he and Bill went into the waters of the lake. As they held on to the canoe and swam toward the beach, they were just what Jingles said, sitting ducks for the riflemen on the island. Bill, they're coming too close. They'll get ashore. Okay, hold up a minute. Hang on to the canoe while I try a shot. But your guns are all wet. They've been wet before and still firing. I don't think the cartridges are soaked yet. Let them have it, Bill. Did you get them? No, it's a pretty long shot for a six-gun, but they sure jumped down behind those rocks. Good. I was getting awful tired of those slugs bouncing around my ears. Hurry up now. I think we've got a chance to get to the beach. Uh-oh. <laughs> hey, Bill, my feet touched the bottom. Yeah, we made it, Jingles. All right, haul the canoe up on the beach. Come on, hurry. woo I'll never get in one of those canoes again as long as I live. No sir, Ree Bob, sir. Stay behind those rocks, Jingles. Quincy and his partner aren't going to give up just yet. Oh, wait till I get my hands on those two. I'm going to put them in a canoe and shove them out in the lake without a paddle and practice shooting at them the rest of the afternoon. You have to catch them first. I'll catch them all right. Come on, let's go. All right, but watch your step and stay close to shelter. I don't see them anywhere, Bill. They're one of two places, Jingles. Either they hightail it back to their cabin, or they're hiding somewhere and waiting to bushwhack them. Now, that's a cheerful thought. <laughs> I got a hunch they went back to the cabin, though, when they couldn't stop us from landing on the island. If they did, it'll be pretty tough to smoke them out of there. Yeah. There's a big clearing around the cabin, and they'll be shooting at us as we move in. I don't know why I had to pick a job where every time you try to do something, you get shot at. I'm beginning to think this business is plum unhealthy. <laughs> There's the cabin down there, Bill. Wonder if they're inside. Those tracks lead right up to the cabin. They must be in there. Let's find out. <laughs> yeah, they're in there, all right. Keep your head down, Jingles. Don't worry. I just got a hole shot through the top of my hat, and I don't want one through my head. Those two coyotes shoot at anything that looks like a man. Yeah, and if we try to rush that cabin, they'll do more than shoot our hats off. Maybe we can give them something else to shoot at. Their canoe is tied up on the other side of this big rock, Jingles. Yeah, but I ain't going to get in it and let them shoot at me. You don't have to. Reach around and pull the canoe in here where they can't see it. All right, but I won't ride in it. I said I'd never get in a canoe again, and I mean it. Give me your shirt and hat before you start. My shirt and hat? What for? If you don't want to get in the canoe, we have to have something that looks like you. Oh, I get it. We'll stuff a couple of dummies with grass and branches. Put them in the canoe and shove them out in the lake, huh? That's the idea. And while they're filling the dummies with lead, we'll run over and smash in the back door. That's a wonderful idea. There's just one little thing wrong with it. What's that? It won't work. It's the only chance we have, partner. Now, you get that canoe and let's give it a try. Well, I haven't heard any more from those two lawmen. Maybe they went back and got their canoe and shoved off. Yeah, and maybe they didn't. They're on this island someplace, and I ain't moving out of this cabin until I find out where they are. That Hickok's too good a shot. Ah, uh, relax. He's got to cross that clearing to get to us, and if he moves into the open, I'll blast him. That's fine, as long as it's daylight. But it's starting to get dark, Bart. So what? You afraid of the dark? No. But they can sneak up on the cabin in the dark. Let them. They won't find us here. 
Just as soon as it's dark enough, we'll take that money from the robbery, sneak down to our canoe, and make our getaway. That's the best thing you've said yet. I don't like having that marshal on my trail. There's all that grub you left in the canoe. We won't even have to stop to load up. What'd you do with the canoe? I left it tied to this side of that big rock. I didn't do nothing with it. Well, it's gone. Gone? It can't be. You just can't see it in the dark. It isn't that dark yet. It's gone, I tell you. Let me look. Hey, wait a minute. Look out there on the lake. Huh? It's a canoe. Yeah, with two men in it. That's Hickok and Jingles trying to pull a fast one on us. Give me that rifle. Here, here it is. You can't miss it that distance, Bart. <laughs> I'll say I can't. You got that big jeopardy? He tumbled right into the canoe. Good. Now for Hickok. Drop that gun, Quincy. Huh? All right, would you... Get your hands up, both of you. I said get your hands up. That's what I mean. Oh, shut up, you big windbag. We got him up. Well, keep him up. Pick up the guns, Jingles. That will be a pleasure. Just tell me one thing, Hickok. Who was I just shooting at out in that canoe? A couple of friends of ours. <laughs> just a pair of dummies, Quincy. We thought they'd fool you when it got dark enough. And they did. And now we'll just start that long trip to the jailhouse with you. That's right, Jingles. I'll watch him while you go get our canoe. Oh, no, sir. Now, not me. I told you I wasn't ever going to get in a canoe again, and I mean it. Then how do you figure to get off this island? Island? Well, that's right. We're clear out in the middle of Buzzard Lake. We sure are. Well, then I guess there's only one thing for me to do, Bill. That's right, partner. Go get the canoe. Go get the canoe nothing, Wild Bill Hickok. I'm going to swim. <laughs> And now, here are the stars of Wild Bill Hickok, Guy Madison and Andy Devine. We'll be back again on Monday, kids, with another adventure story for you. By the way, Andy, what's it going to be? Oh, it's a lollapalooza, Guy. All about cattle rustling and how <laughs> Jingles gives Wild Bill a helping hand. We call it the Battle at Bear Creek. So long, kids. See you Monday. <laughs> Choo-choo-choo. Choo-choo-choo's your favorite cereal. You tell them, Andy. Yeah, from Kellogg's Variety Pack. Yes, keep the whole family happy every morning for breakfast. Roll out freshness and variety. Ten individual serving size boxes with ten assorted Kellogg's cereal favorites, including two ready-sweetened treats that you get in Kellogg's Variety Pack. Choo-choo-choo's your favorite. From Kellogg's Variety Pack at your grocer's. <laughs> Greatest Name in Serials has brought you another exciting story of Wild Bill Hickok, starring Guy Madison and Andy Devine in person. Today's cast included Ken Christie, Howard McNear, Frank Gerstle, and Dusty Walker. Our story was written and directed by Paul Pierce, music by Dick Laurent. This is a David Heyer production, transcribed in Hollywood. Now, this is Charlie Lyon speaking for Kellogg's, the greatest name in cereals, reminding you to listen again Monday, same time, same station, for another adventure of Wild Bill Hickok! <laughs>